Hello, my name is Tridar, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build Roman walls in Minecraft. Let's get started. So let me start by showing you these reference models here. These are, of course, models of the Theodosian walls of Constantinople, the New Rome itself. And they are somewhat legendary in themselves with their triple defense plus the moat here. The land walls were not conquered until the invention of the cannon. So it goes without saying that these are going to be the last word in medieval defenses and should prove very valuable for protecting your city. Now what I'm going to be showing you today is how to build all of these walls in their various smaller components so you can pick and choose what you want to add to your own city. So as you can see here there is of course a, a small moat around here which you can build if you so please. I think the design for that is readily apparent. And you also notice the key feature of these walls is that they're all layered with stone and bands of brick. And that is, of course, in fact, how the Theodosian walls are designed, at least on the exterior. And it was the style of the time. There are pretty much uh, two, two block bands of brick along the entire wall and three blocks of a diorite, as you see here. And that is going to be pretty much a rule uh, without exception, except in some small places like towards the, toward the top here, when you build these walls. So keep that in mind. So let's just pretend that it is the early 6th century AD. We are, have uh, invaded the lands of Constantinople and we are camped outside the walls here and we want to get inside. Well, that's probably not going to happen because first we have to, we have to scale the moat which is uh, going to be somewhat of an impassable obstacle in itself, all the while, while we are being assaulted by arrows. But if we manage to do that and scale up these walls here, we then come to another uh, flat section and another set of walls. So this is not good, so we are still being shot at by arrows from the battlements up there, so we have to somehow get to the walls and either batter them down or scale them. Somehow dodging all the arrows, get up here on the second set of battlements, fight off everyone around here, and uh, then we are up to this point here. So once we have done that, we, well, hmm, we get to another set of very thick walls with a lot of towers and even more arrows being shot at us, so we have to hop down here somehow either a batter or scale of these massive walls all the way up to the top here climb up on the battlements fight off the defenders all along the length of the wall and then we will be able to enter the city of constantinople itself but that of course it did not happen until the advent of the gunpowder and the cannon and you can see uh, exactly why because we have indeed a triple layer of walls plus the moat plus the army defending it. So these walls are uh, quite uh, inviolate, you could say. So I think you can see why I've chosen these particular walls to be the models for the Roman wall tutorial. And without further ado, let us go take a look at the models themselves. All right, let me now give you a tour of all the individual reference models for these walls before we get into the main tutorial itself. So we will start with the, the smallest elements and get all the way to the larger ones at the end. So uh, down here we have a typical tower. It is uh, completely solid. By the way, here we have a, a wall segment. You can see this in profile. It's filled in with cobblestone down the middle for fill to sort of uh, save you from having to farm too many bricks, although I believe uh, villagers will now trade bricks, so this shouldn't be uh, out of the range of possibility for you to build. Over here we can see that this tower that I talked about is connected to a couple of wall segments, and it is uh, done according to uh, this pattern here. Very easy to do, I think. Over here I have a model for a gatehouse that uh, would go through here and there should be enough space in in between here if you wanted to add a piston door 
to lock your gateway, which I assume you will do. You can add that in there, just hollow out the, the space that you need for the design that you've chosen. There are also some small uh, tunnels through here to access the battlements. Over here, we have a diagonal wall section. Show you that from the top. This is identical to the flat wall segment over here, but I believe every, what, four blocks, I have uh, shifted it over to uh, make this pattern here. And then behind it, every two blocks, I have shifted uh, that one over again to uh, make a more severe angle, as you see it done here. It's not quite a 45 degree angle, but it's fairly close. Over here, we can see from the top down, there's of course a 90 degree bend and then a circular bend behind that. And of course, the uh, 90 degree bend is my favorite to do because it is extremely easy. And you can see how that's put together there. Now behind here, we have a rounded wall segment because we have to do this to have truly Roman walls because on the corners of the Roman forts, they would usually round off their walls. On the corners, they wouldn't have the straight 90 degree bends. So I had to include uh, that element here. And behind this, we can see a quick mock-up I have used for all of these wall segments. We can see the gateway, a couple of straight wall segments, a tower, then the first diagonal segment, then a 90 degree bend, then a circular bend connected directly to another circular bend, and then the more severe angled segment and then another tower on the end here. So let's take a look at that from the top. And you can see that using all of these segments that I will be providing for you, you will be able to wall off pretty much any shape of city that you have already constructed or indeed intend to construct. All right, so with that done, before we get on to the tutorial segments over here for those, let me continue showing you all the wall segments. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to fit all this into one video, but I will at least cover the smaller segments in this part. So over here, we now have the, the second wall and we have larger wall segments for that. You can see here with the, the arches instead of just the plain face. So we have a standalone tower here, then a uh, crenellated uh, wall segment here. That's, uh, by the way, what, what these things on top of here are called. These are called crenellations. And there are even more advanced versions of these called uh, machicolations, but those don't come around until uh, much later in the medieval period. And I, I don't believe the Byzantines used those. So if we go through here, we can see that these wall segments are designed with integrated um, ladders and hallways to help you access the lower areas of those so you can adequately defend your city from the, uh, the arrow slits down here and from the, the battlements above. And over here, we have another gateway segment. This is just another wall segment, but it has been modified down through here to house a gateway. And of course, it should be thick enough over here for you to put in a large piston door and some traps, possibly, some maybe some uh, arrow traps or some lava traps, if you so choose to defend your gateway. So over here, we have a tower connected to a couple of wall segments. You can see how those, they just uh, collide directly together, like that there. We go in the inside the tower here. You can see there is a small room in here with uh, views outward there and also a ladder to take you up to the topmost battlements up here. So over here we have, of course, a 45 degree bend in the wall. Uh, for this, the design on the interior, it's rather delicate. So I have elected not to make bended versions of these walls. But if you want to bend them, you can just either every four blocks or every two blocks, 
just shift it over and uh, bend the entire pattern as you see fit. But you will have to work out your own interior tunnel, by the way. Over here, we have a larger tower. I showed you a smaller one to start with, but there is a larger design of tower in here for you to construct. And we can see that the larger design is connected to these wall segments here. And indeed, I have a small mock-up here of several wall segments, a smaller tower, then about uh, five wall segments, then a larger tower, and then three more wall segments. So you can get a small idea of how you can construct these together to a wall off your city. So down here, now we have the third layer, the, the very large walls, with, of course, the, the very large towers. And they are all built according to these patterns here, which are, of course, uh, derivations of the previous patterns. They're just uh, more complicated and uh, larger, of course. And over here, we have the, the wall segments for those, and then a model of that wall segment, several of those connected to a large tower here. And then I believe this should be the 45 degree angle, I mean the, the 90 degree angle bend in the wall for that one. And over here we have something interesting. Uh, it is an octagonal tower because the towers were getting large enough that we could make a reasonable size octagon. So uh, that is what I did off of those here. I believe I have seen a couple of octagonal towers used in the walls of Constantinople. And these are, of course, in my attempt to replicate those for a Minecraft. And they look pretty good from a distance, if I have to say so myself. They, they complement very well the square towers and the wall segments. If you intersperse those with an octagonal tower here and there, they look uh, quite nice, as you can see done here. And this is a full model of what I uh, showed you in the mock-up. When we first started, we have wall segments, then a large tower, three wall segments, an octagonal tower, and two more wall segments. And of course, these will all be here in the download world for you to take a look at if you need additional help beyond what you see in the tutorial. And uh, while I'm over here also, I will be providing for you the reference model for this Byzantine aqueduct if you want to build one of those to complement your uh, walls, because what good Roman city does not have an aqueduct? Uh, let's see, I believe it is now time to go ahead and take a look at all of the various phases of the tutorial itself. Now, because the designs for these are somewhat repetitive, I am going to show you all the numbering for these, but I am not going to break them down into as fine of a phase as I normally would. Because, I mean, you're essentially just alternating and stacking up layers of bricks and diorite and cobble and everything, like you can see done around here. So all you really need, need to do is get the foundation right, and then the tops right, and then the, the middle section sort of build themselves. So let's start over here with the, the small wall segments, and we will start, of course, with the tower that I originally showed you. Uh, but actually, uh, before we do that, first we need to take a look at the bill of materials. So in no particular order, you will be needing lots of cobblestone, tons of diorite, bunches of bricks, many stairs, and buckets of basalt. Now I know what you're saying, Trotter, that's not very useful. You didn't give me any numbers for these. And the reason is because, as you can see, these are designed to be wall segments. And each individual city that you will be constructing, everyone out there is going to have a different number for the both the size of their city and the amount of towers and walls that they will be choosing to use. So there is no possible way that I can give you exact numbers for that. Only to say that if you are going to be building Roman walls, you will need probably several, several thousands, maybe even tens of thousands, of the materials that I have listed behind me here. So, with all that said, let us go and take a look at the, the tower over here. And I'm going to uh, count out the blocks of this. It's very simple. You have three blocks, turn the corner, another three blocks, then two, then one, then three, one, 
three, two, one, three, one, three, two, two, two here, one there, one, two, three, one, two, and a one. So I think that's fairly self-explanatory. That's the, the uh, foundation for the tower, for the smallest tower. And you want to do your foundations as you can see. You're using all of your basalt except for the walkways at the top of your battlements. You're using it all down here as a facing materials for the foundation of your walls. And in the middle of those, as you can see, you want to fill in the middle with cobblestone. Of course, uh, I always fill everything in with cobblestone, but if you are building this in survival, you can, of course, choose to leave these as uh, empty spaces. However, I would not do this because, I mean, they're, they're walls. They're, they're supposed to be solid, aren't they? So I would suggest that you do indeed get enough cobblestone to uh, use on those. And as you can see behind me here, once you have built the foundation for that, you are going up with two layers of brick and three layers of diorite, then two more brick, three more diorite, until you get up to this phase here for your first tower. Now, this is done as a standalone tower, but if you are going to be integrating the tower into walls, as you see done here, you can leave off the buttresses on either side and just connect them in the uh, middle like that. But we, we will get to that in a moment. So once you have done that very simple phase, you then want to do two more layers of brick. And on top of that, you want to start using your quantities of brick stairs to add the stabilizing buttresses to the size of your walls here. You have noticed on these walls, I have used these copiously everywhere, and they are meant to sort of break up the facade of the wall to make it look uh, more visually interesting, but it's also used for structural support, which are very important in walls. And uh, they also sort of uh, mirror the uh, crenellations on top a little bit, as you see it done along there. So once you have done that very simple step, then you can just, what, put two more layers of brick, three more diorite, two more brick, and then you are ready for the crenellations on top, and you do that according to this pattern here, like so. Very simple patterns on all of the four sides, and once that is done, we return over here and put a bit of brick and brick stairs on the top, and a few torches here and there to make the crenellations on top of the small wall towers complete. Okay, uh, now that that is done, let's take a look at a wall segment. So your first wall segment you can see here is what we're going to be taking a look at. So down here you are constructing out the uh, foundations for this. And as you can see, I have, I have um, sort of done with a red wool and obsidian here. So you can get a sense for how large each of these are. But the exact dimensions of these don't really matter, because as I've said, you are going to be uh, you're going to be colliding them together in all sorts of twists and turns to fully wall off your city. So I don't think that the uh, uh, the length and width dimensions are that uh, important. So over here we can see we have three blocks, then one, then what? One, two, three, four, five, then one, and then three. And you're doing that on the other side here with a three block thickness of cobblestone. And just mirror that on the other side there. So you get the foundation there. And once that is done, you do what you did on your tower with bricks and diorite and bricks and diorite until you get up to this level here. And then you want to add your uh, brick stairs on either side here. And then a bit of diorite and then the uh, battlements up here as well. And as you can see, those are done in a three, a one, a three, a one, and a three on either side there. And then on top of those, you add in the brick crenellations. 
as you see it done here. So I think that that is fairly easily said. So let's go over here and take a look at a gatehouse. Now the gatehouse, is, as you can see, it is constructed of two towers and a bit of a wall segment. And the foundations for this is laid out like so. You already know the dimensions for the gatehouse. I mean for the towers. So you just build two towers. And between those you want to leave a distance of, it looks like, five blocks. In the middle here. So you, you can build uh, two towers, then leave a little space, and then you can have enough space to put a, a gateway in. And once you have done that, you use some layers of bricks and diorite and bricks and diorite to get up to the right height, and then you build in a little brick arch, as you see it done here. Very simple, a double thick uh, brick arch going in that way, and then a small uh, door jam of diorite, and then bricks on the interior, and then the other side is, of course, the exact same, according to this pattern here. And once you have done that, then you can build up the, the space for your towers here. You can leave a little space over here if you want to have a ladder that goes up to access the top of your towers. And of course the rest of the towers are done exactly according to the first tower that we did over there. Alright, so let's take a look at now how the tower and the wall interfaces. So you already know how to build both the tower and the wall segments. So as you can see here, this is an example of a tower that is connected adjacent to three wall segments. So there's the foundation for that there, no need to count all the, uh, that out. And then you build it up again with uh, bricks, diorite, and bricks and diorite. And then you construct it again here, according to the same patterns that we have already described. Putting all of that together, and building up the top there, and finally the the top back here until you get something resembling that right there. Alright, so here is the model for the 90 degree wall segment. So as you can see, you sort of build two wall segments and then over here you are building the foundation for this one over here. You got uh, five and then three and three here and then another five, but on the interior we have the 90 degree angle here done like that there. And here's the, the interior of those. Just flat walls of bricks and diorite. The buttresses on the corner of the wall done with the, the stairs here on the outside and on the inside. And then over here you just add your crenellations on top according to that pattern there and your 90 degree wall segment is complete. So let's take a look now at the round wall segment here that I referenced, our good uh, early century Roman uh, round wall corner. So if you're going to be building a Roman fort and you're going to have it uh, be a square with four corners, on each of the corners you need to build one of these to have it be accurate. So let me trace out the arc of this for you. So there's three here, then there's one, then there's five, two, one, 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 two, then five again, and then one, and then three for the interior arc of uh, the quarter of the wall segment there. Then on the outside, it's one, two, three, then one, then five, then three, two, one, 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 two, three, then five again, then one, then three. And as you can see here in the middle, the, the fill is uh, generally three blocks wide of cobblestone on the ends along here. And of course, the, this flat wall segment over here will interface with any of the other wall segments.
So once you have done that, we can move on and uh, add layers of bricks, diorite and bricks and diorite. Then over here, you can see that we have now gotten up to the layer where we are adding the crenellations. So let me mark these out in easy to see red wool along here. In general, you want to make them three blocks wide, leave a block and then three, but on the corners here, things get bent a little, so we have to go down to two for those there. And then the completed section will, of course, look like this here, adding the bricks and the brick stairs on top to complete your ventilation. Now, as I've said over here, you want to have diagonal walls. You need to take straight wall segments and then bend them every couple of blocks. And uh, let me trace out these for you as well. So this is three, four, one, one, three, four, one, two, two, well, one, then three, then four, and one, and one, and then three. And then the other side of that should actually be the mirror image of that, actually. But I think you can see that there is a repeating pattern of the red wool that goes through there. And then on top of that, you stack up your, your bricks and diorite. And then keep doing that until you get to the layer where you have added your brick stairs and then your crenellations. And then cap off your crenellations with bricks, as you see done there. And over here, we will now take a look at the sharper diagonal wall. So I will trace out one side of that for you. Let's uh, start over here. It's one, two, one, 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 three, one, two, one, 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 then two, then one, then two, and one, 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 and three, then one, and then two. So I think you can see in this one we have another repeating pattern with the wool. You have you can see fairly clearly we have three distinct uh, wall segments there. Then on top of that, you add your bricks and diorite. And then on top of that, you add your crenellations, like so, along with your, your basalt to uh, walk on on the top there. And then you complete your battlements and crenellations with some brick stairs, as you see done along here. But according to my timer, it's been about half an hour, so we will... Probably add a part two where I will show you the rest of these walls if you want to build the larger segments. But in the meantime, I think you you have enough if you want to build the, all the smaller wall segments to go ahead and get a good start on fortifying your Roman city. And next time in part two, I will cover all of the larger wall segments along with the, the towers and the gates and the large octagonal tower and everything. But I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.